What's the darkest secret you found out about a family member slash relative? My step-grandfather had a completely hidden life in Australia before he met my grandmother. He had a family and kids in Australia and faked his death by driving his car off a cliff and moving to America. His kids thought he was dead until my grandmother found out about them and reached out years later. His son actually became a famous comedian over there, and from what I know, has a joke he does at his shows about his father faking his death to disconnect from them. Edit. Yes it's Greg Fleet. Host the comedian, Greg Fleet. This thread lets me know that Australia has produced exactly one comedian. Here is his routine about the fake death. Host the comedian. Both of my mother's parents had affairs without the other's knowledge. My grandmother had Parkinson's, and in one of her confused states she told my grandfather that she had an affair. Suffice to say my grandfather was not happy and put her in a home. He then started talking to my mother trying to figure out when it could have happened. He speculated that it happened around the same time he was having his affair, which was around 1966. My mother was shocked. She was born in 1967. So my mother may or may not be an illegitimate child. Wait. So he was pissed she had an affair. So he put her in a home. But he was also having an affair. An old farmer and his wife were sitting on the front porch one evening watching the sunset. The old farmer says honey, you've given me the happiest years of my life. But I haven't always been faithful. Each time I cheated I put a kernel of corn in an envelope. Then he reaches in his pocket and hands his wife an envelope containing 5 kernels. His wife then says well, I haven't always been faithful either. And I did the same thing. She then goes in the house and comes out with an envelope. The farmer opens it and sees 4 kernels. Well, that's not so bad. He says. The wife replies well, there used to be more. But when corn hit 10 a bushel I just had to sell. Found out the hard way that my grandfather was a sexual predator. Turns out my grandmother had been in denial despite both my aunts, their friends, and young girls in their small town claiming he unconsensual intercourse slash molested them. One 16 year old even got pregnant and he paid for the abortion. Grandma lied about his whereabouts slash activities for years to protect him because if he went to jail she'd be unable to afford their house. So. Long story short, me and my then 10 year old cousin were his latest and final victims. Thanks, grandma, sounds a lot like my grandfather. Nobody talks about it, but it was revealed on the night after his funeral that he unconsensual intercourse at least two of his daughters and yep, grandmother stayed silent. He enjoyed a pristine reputation for his life and our utmost respect. Quite a mind muck it was, discovering that he was a pedo. Sounds like grandfather. He was a pastor, unconsensual intercourse and molested two of my aunts for most of their childhood, but he didn't touch his other daughters. Grandmother knew what was happening, but didn't do anything. My earliest memories of him was when I was 5. He was trying to pull me to his lap, but grandmother would take me and shoo me away. She never left me alone with him. I only knew about it when my aunt opened up about him. Nobody else knows in the family. How many times do you hear, after time has passed, where a child is unconsensual intercourse slash molested by a father slash grandfather slash uncle slash brother, and they tell their mother, only to be yelled at, told they're lying, abused physically and basically told to shut up and not say a thing about it to anyone. It's a shame on society for, as long as there have been people on this earth, it's horrible. But often women do stay silent about those things. I saw it many times working in child protection. It makes me wonder if there is also domestic violence that goes along. Most of the times I've seen women who kept quiet or denied it, they were also being badly abused and psychologically abused. That does not excuse it at all. But being a DV survive myself, it really mucks with your perception of reality. I got to. My grandmother was unconsensual intercourse by her stepbrother. She told her mother and her mother literally told her well what am I supposed to do about that? Fast forward to my mom being an adult. She was molested by my grandmother's brother because she let him live with them. She also was threatened to be killed by him when he held her over a cliff at 4 and told her he would drop her and was only put down after my grandmother saw what was happening. 
when my mother told her my grandmother was a big enough biatch to use the same line her mother told her. Well what am I supposed to do about it? She then proceeded to threaten not to visit my mom on several holidays occasions in her adult life after my mother refused to let that same uncle come to Christmas parties or her wedding. Second story isn't from my family. But my exs. My ex had grown up being forced to visit his grandparents and stay with them because his mother insisted he have a good normal relationship with them throughout his life. Lucky for him nothing ever happened. One day when he was around 22 to 23 his mom shows up at my house hysterical and crying. She then sprung it on him that her father regularly unconsensual intercoursed her and even held a gun to her head on multiple occasions. Obviously my ex freaked out, because he was like why did you let me stay at a sexual offender's house? Her reason was that she just wanted a normal family. I was molested as a kid and I cannot mucking fathom having a child and wanting them to be around a pedophile for the sake of family appearances. I feel bad for victims, but when I see women like this I can't help but feel like they are just as bad the predators. My cousin was a pedophile and I didn't realize until I became one of his victims. My sister had mentioned him making her uncomfortable in the past, but I was young and didn't put two and two together until almost a year after I'd become a victim I'm pretty sure I was drugged. I was babysitting his kids for the summer and spent most nights at his house. My mother just kind of shrugged when I told her and nonchalantly said that she knew he was capable of it. She was the one who said I should go do it, and she made sure to take the money I earned by guilting me out of it. I only made like 40 to 80 dollars a week working from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. TL. Doctor, my mom may have basically sold me to my cousin for chump change a week one summer. My mom and dad decided to take in my three cousins because their mom got into a horrible car accident. Two girls and one boy. The girls were 6 and 10, the boy 12. Fast forward to when the 6 years old girl is 14 years old and is asked about birth control. She starts sobbing saying her brother the then 12 years old took her virginity when she was 6 and that it continued until she was about 13. We had no clue. How is everyone now? When I was about 10 I flew to Florida to spend the summer with my grandparents. I made friends with the boy at the end of their street. He had a younger sister. Probably about 6 or so. I'll never forget them trying to persuade me to have relations with her. She was totally in on the deal. We were playing, but the two of them were acting suspicious. At one point she unclothed and laid down. I noped the duck out of there. So weird. Thanks Florida for this weird memory. What the truck man. Jesus. Normally when kids start sexually abusing people that young it means they were already sexually abused earlier in life. Crafty situation all around. I found out that my great grandpa got away with murder. He thought that my great grandma was cheating on him with her dentist, so he went into his office and shot him. He got away with it too, and they didn't find out that he did it until he told everybody before he died. Edit, since a lot of people are asking if she actually cheated on him. I don't know. But, considering he was an butthole, that she was afraid to leave, and he ended up being capable of murder. Probably. Damn. He shot the dentist. But he didn't shoot the secretary retter I, I, I. One of my aunts raised another aunt's baby as her own. My mom had four sisters and a brother all, of whom got married and had kids. So I have around 20 cousins. Unfortunately three of my aunts got breast cancer in their 30s. All three recovered. But years later the youngest, Mariah, got it again, and got it worse. Mariah needed a bone marrow transplant. All her sisters and children got tested. But no one matched. The family then revealed that Mariah had had a teenage pregnancy. Her first child was actually my cousin John who had been adopted and raised by my oldest aunt as her second child. None of the cousins knew about this including John and his revealed to be adoptive siblings. John was asked to get tested and was a match. So he agreed to donate bone marrow to his birth mom. Mariah. John was in his late 20s at the time and had had very little contact with Mariah over his life. So has pretty cool. The transplant took. But Mariah eventually succumbed a year or so later. Wow that must have been a crazy roller coaster for him. Did they ever explain why John's B.O. mom didn't slash cold and raise him, and his aunt became his mom? My uncle didn't have an aneurysm stroke spontaneously, sorry. 
Im not a doctor he deliberately stopped taking his blood thinners. Dude was 63 with a wife. 4 kids and 15 grandkids. The oldest of which was 13 and the youngest was not even a year. He was just done. His wife doesn't know. His kids don't know. I only know cause I overheard the family doctor telling my dad. As far as I know. Only myself. The doctor. And my dad know. As someone on blood thinners. This scares me. It's a reminder of how critical taking these meds every day for the rest of my life is. Stopping is disability at best. Death at worst. I knew what I signed up for though. Beats having open heart surgery every 10 years. Jesus though. What an awful way to go out. My dad did this. Although not because he was done with life. But he just hated taking pills. And had no regard for his own well-being. Luckily his wake up call didn't kill him. He went into the hospital. Because his chest hurt. The doctor who was his usual doctor was very calm. Pulled out a needle. And put it into his chest. Takes some readings. Pulls out a bigger needle. And put it into his chest. Takes more readings. Pulls out the biggest needle my dad had ever seen. And injects him. And it was one of the most painful things he'd ever experienced. Takes his readings. And says okay good. If that didn't work we'd be rolling you into the. Or why. Oh. You were dying. So it was going to have to be open heart surgery. And you probably would have died anyways what? So. Are you going to keep mucking around not taking your pills? I thought he had told everyone this story. Turns out he only told me. And I guess I know why. Because when I told my mom and sister they lost their poop at him. Here goes. My two remaining grandparents. My father's father and my mother's mother. Married each other when they were 75. This made my mother and father stepbrother and stepsister. Since the son of my father's sister my aunt is my cousin. And the son of my mother's brother my uncle is also my cousin. I became both cousins. I am. Therefore. My own cousin. It'll never be alone. What are you doing step bro edit? Wow I didn't think this would get this much upvotes thanks for the awards. Alabama intensifies. That my grandfather murdered his own brother. To inherit his money edit. It's kinda funny. That I received wholesome awards talking about how my grandfather was a murderer lol. Did he get away with it? My dad told me that. Before my mom and dad broke up. He hadn't been happy with her for several years. My mother even had a miscarriage at one point. Which destroyed the both of them. But he couldn't leave her. Because he was afraid. That she would hurt. Or even kill herself. So his only thought was to have a kid with her. So that motherly instinct would hopefully prevent her from killing herself. Are you the child that resulted? What a burden to have to carry. Deleted. What a ducking useless piece of poop. That's so soap opera poop right there. How is that not criminal? Since a lot of these are about murders and sexual offenders, mine is a bit funny. We once found a family photo album in my wacky aunt's house. Start flipping through the plastic pages and boom. Gangbang photos. There had to be like 20 to 30 people in these photos. It was back in the 80s I'd imagine and everyone was so hairy and ugly. I guess Aunt Jan is part of a swinging community. The term swing has really ruined the Jungle Book song I wanna be like you for me. Bad mental image here. After you said everyone was so hairy. Even worse if it was a grup freak. Your aunt probably blew everyone in the room. This reminds me of something that happened a few thanksgivings ago. My cousins and I were reminiscing and going through some of our grandma's things she passed away in 2004, and we came across a manila envelope labeled pictures. My cousin opened it, and a bunch of pics of 1970s flax addicts fell out. The envelope was full of plagiarism cute outs and inserts. So much hair. So many small, floppy dicks. I thought that was pretty bad. But it would have been 200x worse, if the pics were of my grandma having frickfests lol. I found out 2 years ago, that my mother had a baby she gave up for adoption 18 months, before she had me, and then had another baby, when I was 3, and she also gave that baby up for adoption. All 3 of us have different fathers and I think the only reason she kept me was, because my father married her, but that marriage only lasted a year. My mother remarried, when I was 5 and my half brother was born, when I was 7. As far as I knew for 59 years he and I were our mother's only children. I never saw her pregnant with the second baby, because she sent me to live with my great grandparents across the country during her pregnancy. 
My mother and grandmother were the only people who knew about this, and they both took the secret to their graves. The only reason any of it was found out is because of all of the DNA testing people now do. This discovery really impacted my sense of identity for a while. My view of my mother, and our relationship. I've met my half-siblings. An older sister and younger brother, I like them, and am glad I've been able to answer some of their questions, but the initial discovery really messed with me for a bit. My dad found out in his 30s, that his dad wasn't his biological father. He got cancer, and they found out it was from his father's side of the family and my dad asked his dad about it, and the truth came out. He knew that he was a year older than his parents' marriage, but didn't know his father was a different man, because his parents were high school sweethearts, apparently. They broke up, when his dad went off to college and his mom dated someone else. When he found out, he found the guy and reached out, turns out, B.O. father had given my dad's mom money for an abortion and walked out. He didn't even know my dad had been born. He told my dad to never contact him again, and that chapter of his life was over. My dad has half siblings out there, that he isn't contacting, because of the wishes of his B.O. father. Are your siblings anything like you? Did they speak good about being adopted? I hope you're doing okay with the news now. I recently found out that my grandmother committed suicide as a result of the sexual abuse she received from her grandfather as a child aged 8 to 14. Apparently her mother and many of her relatives were compliant with it and would even send her to his house for week long visits where she would sleep in his bed. This post made me cry. No one kept her safe. Near impossible to recover from such horrific abuse. I truly hope that wherever she may be now, she's a tremendous blissful peace what the actual freak i hope they're all burning in hell imagine being born into this poop family all of whom had no moral compass and no guts to stop it a relative tried to poison one of their guests once i learned about it it finally sealed the deal for me and forever changed my view on them they were bonkers anyway but good lord that's too much did you ever happen know the reason my uncle's family claimed he had polio instead of a hereditary crippling disease. His wife figured it out when she went to their family reunion. She already had one child and was pregnant with another. Can someone explain this to me? I feel like I'm missing something. My parents had a nasty divorce which was often accompanied by a lot of crap talking about each other. There was a lot of well your mother blah 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 and your dad is such and such. Most of which I would just ignore, because it was incredibly immature and embarrassing. Until one day my mom broke out the big guns. My siblings and I were just watching T.V in the living room one day and the conversation moved to my dad coming to town to visit. At which point my mom overheard. The mere mention of dad prompted this woman to stop whatever she was doing. Come into the living room and say something along the lines of talking about your dad again. Huh. Did you know that he was molested? My dad had never mentioned anything about it in the 18 years that I lived with him. Which is understandable. To this day, I have no idea why my mom felt the need to blurt that out to the three of us. Or why it is she thought that being the victim of sexual abuse was a stain on someone's character. But it was a really weird way to find out something so deeply personal about my dad. TL. Doctor, my mom told my siblings and I that my dad was molested when he was little as a way to spite him. Edit. Just for clarification and to ease my conscience, my mom was actually a great mom. She practically raised us on her own. And the divorce wasn't her fault in the slightest. She got hit with the death of both of her parents and a divorce all within a two year time span, on top of losing the house. This was completely out of character for her. Which is part of why it caught all of us off guard. She's a good woman that said something crafty that she now regrets. Judge as you will. But I had to clear the air after all of the your mom is a twat comments. Your mom needs to swallow hot coals. Oh no. Is your dad okay now? My biological grandfather threatened to kill my grandmother while she was very young and pregnant with my uncle. Long story short. He was engaged to someone else. My grandmother became a nervous wreck while pregnant and wouldn't leave the house and he used to throw bricks through the window. Eventually she told some of her friends about what had threatened to do to her. Shortly after that he went missing. Never to be seen or heard from again. We always kind of laughed and joked that one of her friends must have threatened him or ran him out of town. 
we would even go as far to say someone might have killed him for her. It wasn't until we were going through her boxes of photos and love letters we realized she was actually friends with the Kray twins. I think you have your answer, mate. Kray twins? I'm very dumb and have no idea who they are. Well my family is mega trucked as it is. Sisters living in a crack house on heroin. Brother and his wife are addicted to meth and coke. The other three siblings are all on coke. I'm literally the only one of us that saw that behavior and was like yeah. Not for me. Good for you. It can be hard to break away from family dysfunction. My uncle tells the story that when he was a kid, his older brother wanted him to go out hunting with him in the woods near their house. They woke up really early and started walking much deeper into the woods than they usually did and way off the normal trails they used. My uncle realized his brother was letting him get further and further ahead. He stopped and turned around to see his brother starting to bring the shotgun up in his direction. He asked him what the hell was he doing. His brother said oh, I thought I saw something. My uncle decided to go back at that point. Later that week he went back and found a pit that someone had dug a bit further off the trail. He never went anywhere with his brother alone again. WTF. How has he never said hey about that time you tried to kill me? Was there a motive he could see? Real question, is the brother your dad? I found out that my great grandpa wasn't actually my great grandpa because my great grandma had my grandma her daughter with a famous boxer who was extremely abusive. She divorced him after having kids with him and met my great grandpa while she was supervising the manufacturing of B-25 bombers during WW2. My mom and I are the only ones besides my grandparents that know the true story. Edit. Holy deuce. I was not expecting this to blow up like it did. If anyone wants to hear more it'd be willing to go more in depth. Edit 2. I talked to my mom about the story and turns out that my great grandma's first husband the boxer died. And that she wore a red dress to his funeral. I would like to see that as a movie with plot twists. Drama. Revelations etc. That would be a good movie. I found out my father run consensual intercourse my sister when I was 11 years old. She was only 7 when he was sexually abusing her. No, they said there wasn't enough evidence. Is he in prison? How is your sister doing now? How are you? A great uncle went to prison for statutory unconsensual intercourse. It only takes a few minutes around him to know he's disgusting. Sounds like a not so great uncle. But seriously that is absolutely disgusting.